what's in your heart. Right. A couple of things, and you know, it could be semantic, so you'll have to decide for yourself. First of all, no sin you could commit could cause a problem between you and God. The idea that you've transgressed God would not be consistent with the gospel. So the idea that I'm going to confess because God is now disappointed or upset with me, and this is going to mend that fence, like I've transgressed Jay if I, you know, do something horrible to his wife, and now I'm going to go try to mend the fence because he's hurt on the inside. God doesn't get offended. And so the idea that my confession is going to make something right between me and God is the part where I would say you want to look into your heart because you're not going to make yourself right with God through your confession. And the idea that you've separated yourself from God when you commit any works of the flesh, I would say, is a contradiction to the gospel. And so when we talk about the heart behind confession, those are kind of some of the things that we're talking about. What is our view of God in that place? And what do we think his view of us is in that place? And if our confession was with the intent that he might look upon us more fondly, then that's where it's transferred into something not not good for our hearts. This isn't about whether it's right or wrong. Is what's good for our hearts having union with God. The Bible talks about coming into the throne room with boldness, right? And it says knowing that God will reward those who come to him. So if your mind is filled with I'm engaging with God to try to get back into his good graces, that's when it's, it's detrimental to our hearts. That's when the enemy could come and shame us tell us we're a disappointment or whatever, and then we're not talking with God anymore. We're trying to confess to get back into His good graces yes. or to get back into connection. Right. Now, I go, this goes hand in hand with what we talked about on Wednesday night with Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation. If in your heart you think that God is going to condemn you for some behavior, then, then confession becomes that way of trying to fix that. But there, that verse is talking about there is no condemnation from God for you. And that, to me, was a light bulb experience on Wednesday night when it was like, oh, wow, just a perspective change in that. So, you know, not necessarily that's where you are, but for me, it's one of those things that, to think about. Well, that verse I always thought was God was condemning me, but there is now, therefore, no condemnation. So that takes the need for confession away perfectly. Well, I, I was going to say, too, that... We are so conditioned to define sin yes. as something that we do. Right. That's not really where sin, sin emanates from. The deeds of the flesh, those things that we do, are a byproduct of something. And if you are living from a platform of innocence, where you see yourself innocent before God, the fruit of that is going to be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, the fruit of the Spirit or the fruit of God. But if we see ourselves as alienated from God and not innocent, we are constantly looking at somehow or another clearing those things out of the way so that we can have God's approval. But we already have God's approval fully and completely. So. The, the platform from which we live our life is what really dictates the fruit of our life. But if you listen, if you're looking at those things and saying, I did this and I did that, and you know, God's holding it against me, that is not innocence. That's right. And I think 